So already our, our drum track is starting to take shape. Um, and all we're using really is kicks, snares, a bit, tiny amount of processing, and then the room and the overheads. The other, the other main thing we've got in there, in this loop, is that ride cymbal, which is really slightly overpowering the whole mix. So, EQ that one. Again, we'll take out a lot of low end on it. Sculpt it through the mid range. And then just try and bring out the bell on it. In the context of the mix, we've got. You just don't want as much of that. So just bring that down in the mix slightly. Now the ride rings quite nicely, but it's dropping off. So that's one thing you can bring out. Again, a little bit of compression. Just bring up the, the tail of the ride cymbal. Uh, we're going to put on it Waves R Compressor. Set quite a low threshold. What I'm also going to do is only going to use a really low ratio. Just helps to bring up the tail. I want to let a lot of the bell sound through, so I don't want too fast an attack. And we're trying to catch the end, so we want a quite a slow release. Now, if we just take a listen again to that loop now, with the whole track running, we should have quite a solid low end, quite an explosive snare. Just uh, the ride really coming along quite nicely. So you, know, you can take a look straight through what the other channels are. Obviously, there's a little fl uh, little tom fill in there. Uh, hi hat's not really getting much action. So toms are one of the I always find one of the hardest things to process because you can do so much with them. You can shape them in so many different ways. Best thing to do. Find the loop. Find where they are in the loop. Loop that. And then let's 
take a listen to those in solo. So it's only really hitting the high tom and take the others out. Just EQ that. Again, get rid of that low end. You see me doing that on every channel. I'm trying to go for quite a natural sound. It's a bit of a, a jazzy drum loop, so you don't want to overly process. But the, the toms are one of the areas where you can get a little bit of uh, your own sound into it. You can really start to shape them. Now that, fit, that, now that we've got that, the tom field is really starting to punch through the mix, which is quite nice. Now one of the other tricks that I like to use is on all my recording channels, so that's everything but the group buses that I've set up, I use DigiDesign's Real Tape Saturation plugin. Now what's quite nice about this is it's really subtle, but on drums it can really bring out that little something else. The way to set it up is, if we just show you on one channel here, let's say the uh, kick input mic, kick in mic, if I solo that one, you can see the needle moving, that's, that's fine, you're not getting a massive amount of tape. You can drive the gain on it quite heavily without really doing too much to the sound. And what you want it to do is bounce around, just steer clear of the red, and you get a little bit of tape compression, a little bit of tape saturation. On its own, if I just bypass that, not making a massive difference, giving you a little something, a little bit of that tape warmth. Once you start bringing that in across a whole group, you know, 12 different channels for, for drums, you get, you get a, a lovely warmth which you can, from the, the real tape saturation, which you don't get usually using just Pro Tools channels themselves. So there we have it. We've mixed a live drum session. We've approached all the, ch the channels individually. We've approached buses. If you want to know any more, I'm Mike Hillier. You can find me at mikehillier.me. That's my website, or just Mike Hillier on Twitter. Thanks for your time. Hope you've enjoyed it.